Did you know that May is bike to wherever month? It used to be that we had a bike to work week, but then everyone stopped going to work for some reason in 2020. Don't remember why. And now we get a whole month to just bike wherever we want, which is really nice. I like it better. So this year I decided to celebrate bike to wherever month by doing my first imperial century, a hundred miles on the bike in one day. And I decided to do it as part of Climate Ride, where we raise money for worthy organizations that are helping in some way to fight climate change. I previously rode with them for a week through Joshua Tree National Park, and I learned a lot. If you haven't seen the video I made about that, please pause this one and go check it out because the algorithm really screwed with me on that one uh, because I made a mistake in the video and I had to upload a new version and YouTube decided no one should see that. So please go check it out. Anyway, I had had so much fun on that Joshua Tree ride and I had ridden so much further than I ever had before. I figured 100 miles in one day with the same group would be not easy per se, but doable. Uh, I had a few friends that were joining me. The ride was gonna go through Sonoma wine country. The forecast looked beautiful and I felt really confident. So I figured, what the heck, let's go for it. And then, you know, everything went wrong. My friends had to drop out of the ride, so I was totally alone. The weather was colder and foggier and rainier than predicted. And the route included a lot of roads like Highway 1, which has no shoulder for a huge portion of it, and a lot of drivers who either aren't paying attention because they're looking at the beautiful scenery, or they're townies who hate cyclists and want them to die. I was cold and wet and exhausted, and about halfway through I decided, screw it, I'm quitting at lunch because this is absolutely miserable. I'm accomplishing nothing today. I had a lot of time to think on that very long slog, and I thought a lot about willpower, something I've always thought that I possessed in great quantities. I quit my office job to do something that requires me to self-motivate every day, I've never had an addiction despite enjoying things like drugs and alcohol and food and gambling. Uh, and I enjoy picking up challenging hobbies and continuing to do them, even though I am objectively bad at them, like surfing. Seriously, I went out surfing once and my Apple Watch buzzed to let me know that I hadn't stood up in an hour. So that was quite the burn. So I was really bummed to hit a point where I really felt mentally that I could not do something I previously wanted to do. And I decided that when I eventually got home, I would read up on the topic of willpower. Like, what is it? Does it run out? And can I improve it? So that's what I did. And here's what I learned. Psychologists consider willpower to be a kind of self-control, the ability to resist a temptation you really desire in order to achieve a longer-term goal. For instance, being able to overcome my short-term physical and mental discomfort on the bike in order to achieve the longer-term goal of improved fitness and, let's be honest, being able to brag that I'd biked 100 miles. Researchers have found that willpower appears to be something that can run out, and not just because the thing you're trying to overcome took too long or became too difficult. In the 1990s, studies began to suggest that willpower is like a muscle that is used over and over again throughout your day. Just as you might work your glutes to run up the stairs to your office, and then again, walking up a hill to lunch, and then doing squats at the gym later, the muscle gets more and more tired over the course of the day. In the same vein, your willpower might be tested by not eating a donut in the break room in the morning, then by not shouting at your idiot coworker in the afternoon, and then deciding to actually go to the gym in the evening. By the time you get home that night, you have way less willpower than you did in the morning. And so it's likely that you're just going to go ahead and sit on the couch and watch trash TV instead of reading a book or meditating or whatever healthy shit you think you should probably be doing instead. Researchers tested this by giving subjects a test of willpower, like having them eat a radish instead of a piece of chocolate, and a control group doing an unrelated task, and then having everyone do a completely different test of willpower, like trying to solve an unsolvable problem and seeing how long it takes them to give up. 
In study after study, the people who had to exercise self-control twice did worse on the second task compared to the control group. So in my case, I needed willpower to go out on the ride even without my friends, and then to get on the bike that morning even though it was cold and rainy, and then to keep going even though the cars were annoying me. And I wasn't mentally prepared for each of those setbacks, so each one of them sapped my willpower a little bit more. As a side note, learning all of this really drove home how, in a way, exercising willpower is a function of privilege. The fewer stresses I have to deal with in everyday life, the more willpower reserves I have to call on when overcoming short-term temptations. Anyway, could I have increased my willpower? Many people think willpower is something unchanging from birth, thanks to the famous marshmallow test, in which psychologist Walter Michel gave four and five-year-olds a marshmallow and told them that they could eat it right away if they wanted, but if they waited until he returned to the room, they would get two marshmallows. He followed those kids later in life and found that the kids who couldn't resist eating the marshmallow right away had all kinds of other problems with willpower later in life. But his own follow-up up study 40 years later actually found that as full-grown adults, those kids who quickly gave in to the marshmallow temptation are generally no more or less financially secure, educated, or physically healthy than their more patient peers. The amount of time the child waited to eat the treat failed to forecast roughly a dozen adult outcomes the researchers tested, including net worth, social standing, high interest rate debt, diet and exercise habits, smoking, procrastination tendencies, and preventative dental care. A lot of research now suggests that you can increase your willpower in general by being physically active, uh, also maybe by practicing meditation, and it can also be built up just like a muscle. You know, the more you practice willpower in a day, you know, you might run out, be tired, but over time, your willpower might improve. But that wasn't helpful while I was actually on the bike. Luckily, psychologists have also come up with a list of ways that they've been able to get subjects to push past their self-control exhaustion. Making them laugh to put them in a more positive mood was one thing that really seemed to work. Uh, raising the stakes by offering them money to complete a task. Prepping them right before that final test of willpower can also help by having them map out if-then statements. For instance, let's say you want to go out with friends to the bar, but you don't actually want to want to drink alcohol. So you tell yourself, okay, if someone offers me a drink, then I will ask for a Diet Coke. You know, it takes some of the mental burden off of your brain if you give it a plan to just mindlessly, so to speak, follow when that temptation arises. So I might've had more success on the bike if just before leaving on the ride, I had told myself, hey, if you feel like stopping, if you get frustrated, then pull over and stretch for 15 minutes or something like that. While looking at various studies on how one might dredge up more willpower when one feels like one is all out, uh, I also learned something that really blew my mind. Some research suggests that the idea that willpower is a limited energy source is not just a metaphor. In 2007, researchers showed that when subjects completed tasks requiring self-control, they experienced a significant drop in blood glucose compared to subjects that completed a different task. The researchers then went on to show that when they gave the subjects a high glucose drink, they showed more willpower than those given a low glucose drink after they were already depleted. Glucose is super important for the functioning of your brain, so researchers suspect that willpower literally does just drain the energy from your brain. Fun fact, this is why if you are ever trying to lose weight, but you're having trouble cutting back on sugar, if someone tells you that you just need to exercise more willpower, legally you are allowed to slap them in the face. I think that's true. So having learned all that, what could I have done to complete that 100 mile bike ride. Well, there are a few things here I couldn't do in the moment. For instance, try not to have to deal with other bullshit isn't possible. I can't control my friends or the weather or other drivers. And like I said, you know, I, I didn't know to come up with some good if then ideas before I got on the bike. So that one's out too. So that leaves three scientifically proven ways to dig deeper 
when willpower is depleted that I could have done on the bike. Uh, eat and drink more sugar, raise the stakes, and cheer the fuck up. And friends, I'm happy to reveal that that is exactly what I did. It didn't happen through my own efforts, though. As I said, I was absolutely positive I was going to quit halfway through this ride. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get to the lunch stop, which is at mile 60, and I'll tell the team there that I would like a ride back to camp, please. I will shower, change into warm, dry clothes, and feel a million times happier and not regret my decision for a single second. At the lunch stop, I happened to see some climate ride people that I actually knew from the Joshua Tree trip. Kaylee, Patrick, and Steve, they told me that as soon as they saw me roll in, they knew I was in trouble because it looked like someone had just sucked my soul right out of my body. <laughs> like, I looked like a drowned rat. They introduced me to another lady uh, that worked with them, Emma Louise. They gave me a bunch of food and sugary drinks, and then they all sat down and talked with me and cracked jokes. And after about 20 minutes, I could feel my willpower regenerating. There's only one more stop to go until camp, they told me. And at that stop, there's going to be free pie. It's just 20 miles, just 20 miles to pie. The stakes, the stakes had been raised. There was pie. So I sighed deeply and I agreed that I would go get that pie. <laughs> but then after that, I was definitely quitting. So I got back on my bike and I took off. And a few minutes down the road, Emma Louise caught up with me on her own bike and told me that she prefers to have company on the road. And if it's okay with me, she'd like to join. And I said, sure. And for the next 20 miles, she made me talk and laugh and enjoy myself. <laughs> and before I knew it, we were at the pie stop. Strawberry rhubarb, by the way, my summertime favorite. And after pie, Emma Louise informed me that I just wasn't allowed to quit. Sorry, she needed the company. So I got back on the bike and we did the final 19 miles back to camp. And when I got into camp, the crew gave me a cup of wine and told me that because the route was actually only 99 miles, I was going to have to get back on my bike and finish my century. <laughs> And I said, absolutely not. I was done. My willpower, gone. Sorry, not sorry. And then I drank that wine while laughing and talking with everyone. And then my husband and friends and dog showed up to congratulate me. And then I got another cup of wine. And then I got back on my bike. And I did that final mile and completed my century officially. I got a big round of applause as I cycled back in. I assume most of the people applauding thought that I was the slowest goddamn cyclist on the planet, but you know what? I didn't even care if they assumed I took 14 hours to finish that route. I was just overjoyed that I finished it at all. That long-term reward really was worth pushing through those short-term difficulties. So yeah, willpower. It's not innate, you can improve it with exercise and meditation, and you can push past your own perceived limitations with forethought, laughter, and friendship. And pie, maybe a little wine. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.